chapter 7, okay? And, and, and as I said, we're going to finish this chapter today. We're going to start it today and we're going to finish it today because I'm only picking out certain aspects, okay? Certain aspects of it that I think are important, certain terms, certain, certain kind of systems that I think you should understand. So we're talking about processes, organizations, and information systems. And we've kind of been talking about processes, organizations, information systems since day one. So what is this chapter all about? Okay. Well, if you think about it, why information systems exist since day one we talked about is information systems allow us to take data, create information for business processes, to serve business processes, to, to market better, uh, to, to make better decisions about employees, about staff, inventory, all those things. Okay, that's what information systems are all about. Well, we think about it, information systems just support business processes. Business processes have existed since there have been businesses. Think about St. Francis University. Since 1847, you know, people came together, faculty came together, they were all, they were all brothers or friars at that point came together, they taught students at places on this campus, and a lot of those processes didn't change, right? They still had to schedule classes, students still enrolled them. Those business processes did not change since 1847. You know, maybe a little bit, but not a whole lot, because all you guys aren't gonna become TORs, like I think they all became TORs in 1847. But still, people register for classes. The things that changed is the information systems that supported them. Right now, you do it through My Francis. You enroll in classes. Right when I schedule classes for our faculty for every semester, you know I do it through a a, a, a web portal. Okay, so those kind of things have changed. The, the information systems that support the processes have changed. Okay, so a couple of things in here that I want to cover. Okay, we talked about structured versus unstructured tasks. Well, a couple of things I want to talk about is the scope. Okay, of processes, which leads to the scope of information systems. What does scope mean? What is scope? What does the scope of something mean? What is the scope? Pablo? The what? The length, okay? So scope means, yeah, the length of it, what's included, what's not included, right? What is the, what is the scope of your vision, right? What is the, the scope, like what is included, like the scope of a project is, what is included in the project and what is not included in the project. So if we think about the scope of processes, it's very important, okay? It's very important because that talks about the types of information systems. I have a, on my, I use something called Workflowy to, it's kind of a, a goofy name, but I use Workflowy to keep track of my to-do list, okay? So that process, what is the scope of that process? Like, who is concerned with that process? Who's concerned with that process? Or I use the group-wise calendar system to see what I'm doing in a given day. What is the scope of that process? Who's concerned with that process? Only me, right? Only me. Like you guys, no one else needs to know about my to-do list. You know, I'm a professional. That's it. The scope of that information system that I use is me. Okay? And we call that a personal information system, right? Doesn't need to collaborate with anyone else. The calendar, eh, you can argue that does, but my to-do system does not, right? The scope of that information system is me. On your phone, you probably have a lot of personal information systems. Give me an example of personal information on your smartphone. Does anyone use, go ahead, Ian. Email, email Okay, I, I would say no, because you're interacting with other people there, right? Um, do you use anything on your smartphone that only you need, only you keep track of? Did you say something, Christina? I said notes. Okay, notes. That might be a good example. You have, I don't know if anyone uses Evernote or OneNote or something like that. There are, there are these personal information systems that allow you to track notes. Um, if anyone ever uses like a, a personal activity tracker, like a Fitbit or something like that, you guys know what I'm talking about? That would be a personal information system, okay? And sometimes uh, those are, you know, those are, are very simple things, but that's the scope of the process. Only I need to know about this, right? Only me, okay? Now, you guys hate group projects, but generally speaking, you can't work alone, 
right? You cannot work alone. So a lot of times we're talking more about what we call work group, departmental, or functional processes or information systems. So when we talk about functional or departmental or work group processes, we think about maybe our department, and that's why it's called departmental. We think maybe out about our department in an organization. For example, if I work in the finance department, we have an information system that keeps track of our general ledger, keeps track of our expenses, invoices, those kind of things. That information system really supports the work processes that happen in our department, right? In 1847, we probably had some prior who was in charge of the finances. They call them you know, the treasurer, father treasurer, or whatever it is. Now we have a department who still does the same thing. They bill students. You know, they invoice things, they pay, they pay accounts, all those kind of things. But it's related to that function, that department, okay? So there are functional information systems or work group or departmental information systems. And your book says they support one or more work group processes, 10 to 100 users, procedures often formalized, uh, problem solutions within groups, work groups can duplicate data, somewhat difficult to change. If I'm in our marketing department, there's probably some kind of departmental information system there. It keeps track of our ad, our expenditures on marketing, you know, creating, uh, creating our ads, things like that, or press releases. There's information systems that support that. Now, the next level up is enterprise. Okay, enterprise information systems are concerned with the whole organization. Okay, the whole organization. Um, you know, the examples they use is a, a work group is like a doctor's office, medical practice. You know, an enterprise would be something concerned with, you know, an entire hospital, okay? For example, uh, you know, if we do, uh, I don't know, like a patient system for our hospital, you know, we would have to have concern with, you know, the finances, maybe the medical care of the patient, uh, all those things would have to come together in one information system. You know, laundry has to be involved. Uh, maybe com uh, the, 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 the TV, uh, the TV area, the entertainment area. All those things have to come together. Enterprise information systems support the entire organization. Right? They're not concerned with just this department or this function of the organization. Um, at St. Francis University, I'm trying to think of a good enterprise system that we have. Um, we have kind of one that deals with, it's more of a, it's called a customer relationship management system. I think it's called a, you know, a student relationship management system. But it deals with students throughout their entire life cycle as potential students, as current students, and then as they advance to alumni, you know, we, we look at them for you know, alumni events and for fundraising. Okay? Now, the fourth one, or the fourth, the fourth one down here is inter-enterprise. Inter-enterprise means these processes go beyond our organization and actually touch other organizations. If you look at uh, inter-enterprise, that means it goes from our organization to another organization. So, you know, if we think about the medical thing, you think about it, you're going to have to uh, bill the insurance company if you're a hospital. That goes out to another organization, Highmark, Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, UPMC. Uh, all those things have to be tracked. And patient records, you know, can't be just your patient records aren't just held one place. Sometimes they're transferred from the radiologist to the doctor, whatever it might be, to the pharmacist. So those are inter-enterprise systems, right? They go beyond the scope of one enterprise. They have to touch multiple enterprises throughout the thing throughout the process. So processes dictate what is the scope of information system because information systems only exist to support these processes. Okay, so I just wanted to define that. And I'm going to talk about a problem that often occurs in organizations and talk about how it happens 
and what we can do to solve that, or what we can do to alleviate some of the problems. You ever hear the term information silo? It's a good business term, and you, know, you use it, it sounds like you know what the hell you're talking about. We're information silo. We're information silo. What's a silo? What's a silo? Storage facility, what do they look like, Brandon? Usually tall and narrow. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about, the grain silos, you see them? I mean, we're in Loretta, for God's sake. You just drive a mile out, you'll see a few of them. They're usually, you know, on farms, they're these large, large metal cylindrical structures, right? And they store grain in them and feed. You guys know what I'm talking about? You know, in the Cold War time, they used to stay, that we put missiles in them, like hit, hit our missiles in them, you know what I'm talking about? So these are called silos. Okay, and when we talk about information silos within an organization, what we're saying is this is the organization, and maybe marketing has their own departmental or work group information system. Okay, and in that information system, you know they store information about all our customers. You know the customer names. So they have information about customers, uh, maybe what they bought, okay, uh, you know where they live, their address, those kind of things. Uh, maybe in our organization as well, we have a finance function, and they built their own information systems, and they deal with billing, okay, and they also deal with, uh, you know, going the the the. Uh, uh, financial statements for the company. And they built their own information system. Uh, and then maybe we also have like a support area. And they deal with customer problems. Okay. And then maybe you also have like a sales area, like a sales and shipping area. And they deal with their own deal. Okay, so think about this, all right? What has occurred in, in, in many organizations is you think computers have been around for a long time, but they really haven't been. I mean, really they became mainstream in the last 40, 40 so some years. So we always had these functions in our organization. And some manager in some department says, I wanna do this better. So she went out and bought you know, a marketing system, and, and he went out and bought a finance system, and he went out and bought a, uh, what did I, a support system, and she went out and bought a sales system, okay? And they supported their work group processes very well. You know, this is what we do in our work group. This system will support what we do in our work group. That led to a problem. What is the problem that that leads to? What is that problem that that leads to? problem is information silence. So what do you think that means in the context of what I just described? What do you think that means in the context of what I just described? It doesn't change. Maybe like those things can't work together. Okay. So think about silos, right? That's why they call it information silos. Silos, boom. You know, there's no, there's no, there's no tie between the grain and the corn silo, yes? It's just this silo. So if we think about it, if we have an entire system you know, for marketing to, to, to look at, you know, to, to recruit customers, to look at sales leads, all those kind of things, maybe what customers bought. And then we have another system that deals with billing. We have another system that deals with customer problems. And maybe we have another thing that deals with like sales and shipping, all those kind of things. What happens, okay, what happens is all that information lives in that, in, in that, in that, uh, in that, functional or that work, yeah, work group system, but it doesn't live in here. So have you ever called somewhere for support and you had to give them like your, you know, you maybe got transferred around and you had to give them your information like three or four times. Did you ever have to do that? Okay. Well, that is a symptom of what we call information silos. It means that organization, the person you called first in this department is using one information system, and this person in this department is using this information system, 
and they don't have like one record that deals with Brandon Mech or Ian, okay? They have several systems, and like, oh, that's not in this system, it's in this system, okay? Now, what that is called is information silos. Why are they problematic? Let's talk, talk about that. Why are they problematic? And we can see why they happen, right? Because that's naturally how we build up. We're a department manager. We want a system to take care of marketing. We want a system to take care of finance, whatever it is. We buy it. We don't care what the hell they're doing over there in support, what they're doing in sales. I'm in charge of this department, this work group. I'll buy a system to support it. But what kind of problems does that lead to in an organization? Think about the information in there. What kind of problems? Are there? Danny? Very good. I like that. The word we use for that, she said inconsistency of, of data, and that's right, and we call that data integrity issues. We're building a deck on my house. I don't know if I went into this at all. We're building a deck on my house, and my brother works at Lowe's. My brother's the manager of the State College Lowe's. He was in Indiana. So I'm, I'm kind of, I have to go to Lowe's, right? Because it's my brother, you know. It's my brother, right? So I have to go to Lowe's. They have the worst information system ever. So I, I, and I told them that, right? My brother, I, I said, your information systems don't talk to one another at all. You know, if you call and, if you order something on the web and try to go pick it up online, they, they, don't, they, they don't know who you are. It's like, it's like you, like this order reappeared anywhere. I have, I looked in their system, not looked in their system, but when, when they looked at <coughs> my information, they have me there five times. They have five John Mikos plus three, my dad's John Mikos, three John Mikos for my dad. They have eight John Mikos in their, in, the, in their whole system. There's only two of them, okay? They have eight. That's data integrity problems because every time I order something, they create a new John Miko record, right? And they have like seven different phone numbers for me and I don't think any of them are right. I've given them my cell phone, I've given them my home phone. They have like some 807 number for me or they call my dad half the time. Right, because they have some kind of, I don't, they have silos, I don't know what the hell they have going on there, but their information system is awful. I can go to the web and say, I was ordering some boards, and I said, hey, you have 56 of these boards, and I'm like, we don't. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you do. They said, no, we don't. And I, so I go home and I said, I'll, I'll do, all right, I'll order them online, special order them online, boom, boom, boom. And, and within 20 minutes, I get a message on my cell phone, your order is ready at the, like, the store I was just at 30 minutes ago. So they had them there, you know what I mean? Like they didn't like magically truck them in because I was asking about them. They had them there, I'm like, so I had to drive back over and I told them about it. They have the worst information systems ever. It is an epidemic, symptomatic of data integrity issues. So they have eight John Mikos in there, right? What's the problem? Say I actually do change my address or change my phone number. Well, a couple of problems. Do you have to change all eight, right? Or you know, if there are eight of them, which one is the right one, yes? So that's data integrity issues, and that happens when we have these silos, right? We don't know what's right, we don't know what's wrong, we don't have one record, we can't find one unique person, we can't match up John Miko to this. What are other issues that happen? What are other issues that happen? What are other issues that happen? So data integrity is definitely one of them. What else? Duplication of data, data integrity, duplication, what else? What else? When I pick up that phone and they have to transfer me and I have to give them my information again, what we call that is a, that's data integrity issues, but it also adds time to the process. And what we call that is a disjointed process. You know, if you have to go from, you know, you're one person, you have one relationship with Lowe's or whoever it is, you want one system to take care of that, right? If you have to go through multiple people and multiple channels, you can tell they're using different information systems, we call that a disjointed process. Disjointed processes are when you know, we have to go from one information system to another when really we shouldn't have to. Okay? When we go from, hey, we put in a support call and they say, well, yeah, we're going to look at the things you bought, so we have to transfer over there, or we have to look up your, you know, your billing information, we're going to have to go over here, they, you have to give them your information. That's a disjointed process. Disjointed processes take time and they take money, right? They take time and they take money. So this isn't like just Lowe's problem. This happens a lot in organizations. Because if you think about it, departmental managers are, are, set, are trained to say, 
I care about my department. I care more about the school of business than I care about school of arts and letters or school of health sciences or school of sciences. Much more, right? I don't care, well, I do care a little, but I care a lot about what happens in the school of business. So people that are in charge of marketing care about marketing, they don't care about what happens there. So what is the big problem this leads to? Not just data integrity, that's a problem, right? Disjointed processes, that's a problem for sure. But what else is the, is the problem Maybe not a problem, but what is the opportunity we're missing when we have information silos? What is the opportunity we're missing when we have information silos? And some co companies are very, very good. They don't have information silos. And a lot of times it's newer companies that didn't grow these systems from what we call legacy systems. What's the opportunity I'm missing? Give me an opportunity that I'm missing. Yes. What does information lead to? Knowledge. knowledge. And knowledge is power, right? So now, think about it. You know, think about it. If I can learn, if I can share this information, so beyond just having one record for John Miko, right? One John Miko record, which is nice. So that John Miko is John Miko, not eight John Mikos in our damn system, right? And that, that I know his phone number, I know where he lives, and you know, this is him, right? Beyond that, beyond fixing that, the big opportunity here is we can share information, right? We can share information. We can, we can share information through departments and treat this person as one person. What kind of opportunities can that lead to? Well, that can lead to a lot of opportunities. If this customer isn't very valuable to us, but he or she, like, you know, and we, companies track that, like how valuable a customer is, but we're spending hours and hours and hours of time with him or her. Is it worth it? No. Okay. If probably, if maybe someone, uh, if someone, uh, if someone ordered this product, maybe they also are interested in our services, our, our support services, right? So maybe that goes into a lead to another system. There's a big opportunity to share information, and we share information across these things. That leads to knowledge, and knowledge leads to power. So what do we do? How do we fix this? How do we fix this? So we're taking work group, departmental, function, functional processes, and functional information systems. How can we fix it? How can we fix it? What do you think we need to do with those processes? Integrate them, okay. There's a couple ways we can do that. The first way is to move from departmental information systems to what we call enterprise information systems. Enterprise information systems say, you know what, instead of us having a, a, a process for marketing, a process over here, or, or a system over here for finance, we're going to have a system, okay, a system that has components that deal with marketing and components that deal with sales and components that deal with finance. And in fact, when we talk about a lot of these, the one name that always comes up, and if you're a marketing major, you should know this, what is CERM? What is a CERM system, C-R-M? What is CERM? If you're a marketing major, you should know this term. What is a CERM system? Because you might look foolish on an interview if you don't know what a CERM system is. What does CRM stand for? Anyone? Okay. CRM is an example of an enterprise system. Okay. And it stands for a customer relationship management system. And instead of departments being the function, being the way things are broken out, we say the customer okay, is the heart of our customer relationship management system. And we're this this whole system is gonna track the customer throughout the entire customer life cycle. What is the customer life cycle? What is your typical customer life cycle? Before you came to St. Francis and were a customer, what were you to St. Francis? You were a prospect. So if we think about it, okay? The customer life cycle is this. 
you know, we market first, right? There's a market, so instead of a marketing system, part of our CERN, we have like a marketing module that says, hey, here are our leads. And St. Francis goes out and they, they buy names, right? We buy names, those are called leads. We buy names from the PSSA, uh, from the SAT. We say these are people that are in your area, they're interested in your majors, they score here. And then what do you do? When you were junior in high school, or senior in high school, what did you guys get in the mail? Got postcards, right? You got flyers, you got invitations to open houses. Well, as soon as we send that to you, you're in our system, okay? We sent this postcard to ABC student on this date, okay? Let's keep that. Now you're in our system, right? You are our system. Right now, you're in our system. You're a customer in our system. You're just a lead at this point, but you're a customer. Now, of those 10,000, maybe 100,000 people we solicited, we targeted, you know, some of them actually came here. In fact, 400 came here, right? So now, those 10,000, we keep, we keep those 10,000. These were people that, you know, data is cheap. But now, these are actual, uh, so the lead tracking process, these now are actually customers. We already have your data because we, we marketed to you. We know where you live, we know your name. Maybe we know your social security number, all those things. Now that, that, that information needs to be used a lot of different places because you decide to enroll at St. Francis. Now where does that information need to be used? Now, the same information, that same customer record needs to go to where? Or be accessed by, not go to, because be accessed by you know, billing, right? Residence life, campus police, maybe athletics, maybe uh, the registrar's office. All those things. So instead of separate systems, one customer record that was generated as you were a lead, okay? One customer record. Now, think about that. As that goes further, okay, as that goes further, you know, and maybe move away from the St. Francis issue, uh, but as I'm a customer of Amazon.com, they have a great customer relationship management system. They know what kind of, kind of things they sent me recently, like, because a lot of times we want to upsell John Nico, right? We want to, here's some other special offer. And if I happen to be calling, they can look at one system and say, Dr. or John Nico bought these seven items in the last month, okay? We also sent him these three promotions, and he reported these two problems. So now I know, because those aren't in one system, aren't in four systems, they're in one system. Now I know what my interaction with John Nico was, right? You don't have to call up and say, I'm referring to problem number one, two, nine, seven, four, three, two, one. They say, you say, I'm John Miko, right? And they say, okay, John Miko, here's what you have going on because it's all in one damn system. Does this make sense? So when we lose that customer, sometimes we try to win them back, right? And we say, well, if they were a high value customer, meaning they bought a lot of money or they had a lot of potential, we try to win them back. If they're a low value customer, hell with them, they can go away, but we keep, one system that concerns everything about John Miko throughout the system. It's not like, hey, we, we, need your, we need you to keep track of grades on John Miko so you're in this system. We need to build John Miko so you're in this system. You're in one system that uses that information, different processes. These are called, okay, these are called, these types of systems are called enterprise solutions. More and more organizations are moving to enterprise solutions. The one we just mentioned is something called CERN, okay? Uh, I think I lied to you, I said I'm gonna get done with all this today, I went too much. Uh, but anyways, uh, we'll finish it up on Wednesday and then move on to something a little more fun. Uh, we'll move on to e-commerce, which is great stuff, and social media information systems, which is Captain Great. Uh, so have a great day. Hey, if you didn't take the exam, come up and see me. Just say that. Oh, in the hall, actually.